Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to OLC TV for some more A World Betrayed DLC for Total War 3 Kingdom's Perfect Star Series, this time as Gongsun Zan. So, those of you who follow the channel for a while uh, will understand that I studied Gongsun Zan uh, as part of my ancient Chinese history uh, degree. Now, Gongsun Zan has an interesting story. He fascinates me. Um, as a character. He doesn't really play a very large role in Three Kingdoms, so quite rightly his faction and everything else doesn't have that much play for it. But he was a military general on the frontiers dealing with the nomadic tribes um, for most of his career before this kicked off. Um, and he was a moderately successful general. He was certainly a brave general. Um, he certainly lost a lot of men in his campaigns. Uh, there's an element that he was a little bit arrogant, a little bit vain, and uh, had... Because a lot of the time he fought alongside Wuhan auxiliaries, who were a nomadic tribe who were sort of becoming encompassed as part of the greater Chinese empire. Um, he didn't really care so much about their lives, and they tended to die off in horrific numbers under his care. Um, but... Still, he was a very famous cavalry general at the time, and a very good cavalry general at the time. And uh, he and Yuan Shao conspired to take Han Fu's territory as the coalition was breaking up. Um, as Gong Suzanne prepared for an invasion, Han Fu turned around to Yuan Shao and said, Hey, tell you what, uh, why don't I just become part of your faction? And sort of surrendered, confederated with him. Which made Gong Suzanne look like the bad guy, made him look like he was the one who caused the invasion and everything else. And Yuan Shao didn't give Gong Suzanne any of the territory agreed upon. So it created a conflict between them. Now, this ended up with a battle at Jie Chao, uh, which was a ford crossing, um, where Gong Suzanne and his army launched a massive assault. Um, he had very, very good cavalry, the uh, White Horse Fellows, as you can see here. Um, mounted horse archers, but they weren't just horse archers. These were proper cavalry swords bows they could do a bit of everything elite cavalry uh, based a lot off fighting the nomadic tribes made up probably almost certainly from huge numbers of wuhan troops um he was a little bit overconfident uh, he had his uh, general yang gang uh, lead an attack and uh, yuan shao sent out a general with some elite spearmen supported by crossbows on the flanks Cavalry tried to smash straight through the spearmen, but of course Spearwall versus Cavalry only ever can be one winner. Yang Gang was killed, the cavalry fled, and from that point onwards, that was in 191, from that point onwards, Yuan Shao has had Gong Sun San a little bit on the back foot. Gong Sun San did manage to escape with his army. His army was relatively intact, though it wasn't quite as confident or the same as before. Um, he had another problem where he had uh, set up Liu Yu um, and had him executed because of course if you have played the Man of Heaven DLC you'll know that Liu Yu owns all of this territory and Gong Sun Zan works for Liu Yu. Well Liu Yu and Gong Sun Zan had a falling out over how to treat people like the Wuhan, the Xianbei um, and the Xiongnu who are the nomadic tribes in that area. Liu Yu wanted a more conciliatory approach, Gong Sun Zan wanted a very much more violent approach um, and they fell out big time over it um, and Gong Suzanne had an opportunity when there was an imperial audit of the area he used the fact that Yuan Shao plus a few others had tried to put Liu Yu on the imperial throne said that Liu Yu was a usurper trying to become the emperor and had him executed um, which meant that Gong Suzanne sort of absorbed this whole top territory here but it did create some problems because a lot of the generals here were not loyal to him, as you'll see at the beginning. Xiang Yu Fu, who is this red territory here, who is your baby's first battle area, he is one of the people who was loyal to Liu Yu when the opportunity arose after um, he had lost, after Gong Suzanne lost to Yuan Shao at Jie Chao. Um, he rose up in rebellion and stayed pretty much independent throughout, eventually surrendering to Cao Cao. Uh, Xiang Yu Fu as well, based on his name, I would say he was probably Xiangbei. Um, I don't think he's actually Han Chinese as well, which may also be the cause of a lot of the enmity. It does state that Gong Sun Zan uh, is a hard start. I think that is very much underselling just how difficult this start is. It's ridiculously tough. 
It really is. Um, Cause Gong Sun Zan, all right, he's a good general, but these are his no worthy characters. Gong Sun Shu, his son, and Guang Jing. Guan Jing was the guy who suggested to Gong Sun Zan to stay in these fortresses that he built sort of along this area here when Yuan Shao had everything else and not go out support his other generals. Um, so a lot of his other generals surrendered and went over to Yuan Shao's side or died fighting. Uh, when Gong Sun Zan wanted to sally out, Guan Jing said no, better to stay in the defensive area and of course eventually when Gong Sun Zan's fortress was undermined and set on fire from underneath um, Gong Sun Zan had to kill his own family and he himself was eventually he set himself on fire and was beheaded at the same time by uh, before he could die by Yuan Shao's troops uh, Guan Jing was so distraught because he knew that he had at least been the reason why Gong Sun Zan had fought in that fashion um, so Guan Jing rode out into battle and uh, was killed. Brave end to a not very brilliant strategist. That is why he is called the cautious strategist. Gong Sun Xu tried to save his father by breaking out, heading west, uh, forming a coalition with Jiang Yan, and they came with 100,000 men, but they were slightly too late. Uh, Jiang Yan was a little bit beaten, um, forced back, and eventually was surrendered to Ta Ta. Okay, big history lesson there, I know. Uh, apologize for that for any of you who's more interested in the game. But for me, this is uh, a little bit of my thing. So I do like talking about it. Um, he's a vanguard. He's, he's a very good vanguard. He's not, you know, up there with the absolute top tier vanguards, but he's a very good vanguard. He has plus 12% armor, full shot cavalry, and plus 50% reinforcement range, which is all right. Um, he could potentially, like, for me, when I look at him, you think that he should get some other benefits for cavalry because he was the cavalry general, and there are other benefits knocking about like that for other leaders. Um, so I don't think that would make him game breaking. I think that would make it a little bit fairer. He has a unique military government, which gives him specific court positions that other people don't have. <sighs> they are sort of in the place of administrators because you get reduction in administrators but they are limited to which type of officer can take those roles um, they also can be negatively affected when you become king as well so it's not an ideal form of government if you are to become king which of course is one of the problems you will play in um, you have a military government government building chain which is quite good and you have these white horse fellows and the white horse raiders the raiders are the light um, infant, uh, the, the light horse archers while well, the fellows are the elite ones they are incredibly good long range archer fire on horseback 360 um, mobile units they're brilliant Gong Sun Xu and Guan Jing as we've talked about he also has a vassal uh, Tian Kai um, who is the person who he sent south to aid Kong Rong um, against yellow turbans and also against uh, Yuan Shang, I believe, Yuan Shao's, uh, it could be Yuan Tan, I can't remember, uh, Yuan Shao's uh, son, who is in the area. Uh, Tian Kai also had Liu Bei under him and Zhao Yun. Um, and then Liu Bei sort of up to the left, uh, which isn't quite covered in romance, but the history does state it pretty effectively. He up to the left, uh, took some soldiers with him and went over to Tao Tian, um, leaving Tian Kai a little bit up Shit's Creek. Anyway, I have a bias against uh, Liu Bei as well. Um, anyway, he has a good relationship with Kong Rong, he has a good relationship with Liu Bei nonetheless, and he has a good relationship with Zhang Yan. Enough of the history lesson, let's get into the game. Jangarzi Chung 
。此生为祭，当由孤自己书写。主公，自从残酷的命运迫使你了结刘玉的性命，已过了一年之久。其人明谋善断，曾为我上司，然死则死矣，徒添悲耳。如今昔日盟友先于府，公然于北方反叛，虽于心不忍，却是不得不了结之死。即便如此。目前形势下，已有片刻喘息之机。虽然朝廷制止了袁绍大军向您的领地迈进，然而，一旦他料理完其他事务，显然还是会卷土重来。那么，吾等必须做好准备，把握一切可趁之机。西面的盗匪长久以来折磨着袁绍，虽然他们皆不法之徒，未必不可以加以利用。对付袁绍，若您能挺过袁绍大军的攻势，便能逆转下风，休养生息，加以反击。公孙瓒大人，虽然线下重担压身，考验重重，但您仍需古镇士气，不动如山。如若成功，便能跻身问鼎，中原之列。Okay, and here we have Gong Sun Zan in all his might, there with Dreadbringer the spear. So his spear was supposed to have two blades, one at either end. Um, that was one of the unique weapons uh, of the period. Lots of the generals had something to make them stand out. Gong Sun Zan was very arrogant, very vain. So his horse was covered in bells. He used the white horse not because of vanity or arrogance. The white horse was actually used to scare the nomadic tribes because they worshipped it. So it sort of prevented them from attacking him in many ways. Um, and also, he used particularly vicious battle tactics against them, um, which led to him being feared as well by them. But also, his uh, image to be used as target practice. Anyway, thank you, advisor. Re-establish your power. So you have, through myriad misfortunes, found yourself upon hard times, Gong Sun Zan. But that can change. Though Liu Yu is gone and Xiang Yufu now stands opposed to you, fate has been kind enough to grant you a reprieve from Yuan Shao. Seek an advantage against him and the others, perhaps the mountain bandits, and re-secure your home. So we need to defeat Xiang Yufu and prepare for a confrontation with Yuan Shao. Now Xiang Yufu, as I said before, uh, he was actually a loyalist of Liu Yu. Um, Liu Yu was killed because of that uh, plot uh, by Gong Sun Zan, and Xiang Yufu waited for a little bit and then rebelled. Um, <clears throat> Gong Sun Zan draws the blade against rebels. Rebels cannot be tolerated, Gong Sun Zan, so it has always been. You are the commander of the White Riders, so take to the field with your characteristic zeal and see these unjust criminals brought low. So engage the following general's army, Shen Yin, who is a kinsman of Shen Yufu. And we will get the 30 plus uh, military supplies and 5 plus morale, which is all very nice. First of all, we're going to check out. Oh, this isn't a bad selection. So let's have a look at our generals. As I said, our generals are pretty weak, but this will work quite nicely with our air. Um, I quite like that as well, just because it gives the expertise bonus. As far as followers go, plus four cunning. That might be more useful for you than it would be for my boss. Instinct, instinct, we're gonna go for one for you. And one for Tian Yu, who is Tian Kai's son, I believe. Um, and then Song Jingting, we're going to give you this just to boost your cunning. So Song Jingting and Guan Jing are your two strategists at the beginning. Song Jingting is uh, Gong Sun Zan's wife. She has fire arrows and night battles. This will be very, very important for Gong Sun Zan. Guan Jing has a flaming shot. So less important for Gong Sun Zan straight away, um, as will be explained as we go on. Now we've dealt with that, just a quick look. Here's Tian Kai. Tian Kai is our vassal. Um, what will happen is on turn five, you will see Yuan Shao will deal with someone here and will slowly start to move his way across here. And then he'll suddenly in two turns be sort of here. Um, end of turn four, 
he will advance and he will hit Borhai. Also, you will have an army mustered somewhere around here, probably led by Yan Liang, possibly led by Wen Chou, and they will attack here. It'll be a full stack army, but it won't be at full strength. So have two armies pincering Tian Kai. You do not want to do what uh, Gong Sun Zan did and lock yourself up in the northeast and pretend nothing is going on. You actually want to support Tian Kai for as long as you possibly can. Uh, the reasons are mostly because he will act as a decent buffer uh, for you along here dealing with Yuan Tan and the like later on in the game, but also because your trade uh, routes are limited. You have Gong Sundu, you have Jiang Yan, and that's kind of it apart from Tian Kai. Um, so for your e uh, economic welfare, you want to keep him up and running as well. So we're going to aim this all to defend him. Now, as things currently stand, Yuan Shao has a ton of generals, a ton of money, but no other armies. So these cities are relatively undefended, but their garrisons tend to be pretty solid. You can't quite go in there and deal with them. But you have our son here, who is in prime position to start raiding down here, if you so wish. All of this line down here are farmlands until you get to a copper mine down here. So you can really knacker his economy, especially if you're looking at it as a basis of you're not really in it for holding land, you're more in it for just damage. Um, so you can go in here, you can take, but it doesn't matter if you lose them. Now, before we go in to fight Baby's first battle, we're actually going to have a look at the diplomacy because there's a lot we need to do. First of all, Gong Sundu. Trade proposal, and what we want to do is see if we can get money in return for everything we do. And this is going to seem slightly long-winded. We're going to get 600 if we do it that way. What happens if we get just straight up cash? Um, but there'll be a lot of bouncing around because every decision you make then affects uh, how other factions perceive you, which open up other doors for you, basically. So we're going to do that. That's going to bring us some money. Uh, trade agreement with Tian Kai, our vassal. Now, Tian Kai, we're not actually going to ask him for any money. What we might do is have a look at his ancillaries and see if there's anything we fancy here. Stone pig. I think this is going to be way too much for me to... Yeah, way, way, way too much. Um, but yeah, if there's anything you fancy that you want to spend money on, feel free to do it. If not, what you should really do is look at getting some food. Only one food, but one food is going to help you no end because you have no other food production up here. So take that, he'll be happy, and that money is going to go to building up his own army. If you take money from him then, he can no longer afford the extra two units. I know it's only two units, but it's a hard fight, and the more units you have, the better it is for you. Now, we are going to look at military access here. So we'll go to Zhang Yan first, because we want to be buddies with this chap here, and we're just going to request some money. See how much he'll pay. Oh, there we go. See, not too bad. Uh, military access as well with Liu Bei. Uh, negotiate deal. Uh, we would like regular payments, please. Oh, a little bit too much. Um, almost there. Boom, there we go. Not bad. We're also going to look at forming a coalition with the big man. Um, again, you can potentially look at this and see if he has any ancillaries you fancy. He actually has quite a lot. Iron Sickle's not bad for our son. How much is that going to set me back? Oh, nice. Um, can you keep paying? You can. Oh, it's starting to jump quite hard when we get to this stage, so let's just request front up cash. And he should be able to pay a decent amount of money. There we go. Not bad. Right, then we want to look back here and you'll see all of this is opened up. So Kong Rong. Kong Wong is important because he is at war with uh, Yuan Shao. Again, he wants a lot. So you can have a look for uh, ancillaries. Uh, Book of Songs is quite nice. No, I'm I'm all right for that. Actually, from him, what I would like is just front up money because he makes a lot per turn. 
Um, oh, it's, there we go. There's the big jump. So that's four. Uh, he should. Yeah, he can still pay quite a lot of money. There we go. That's a decent amount of money coming in. See that? See how this is going. And Sun Tzu. Now, Sun Tzu is interesting. But Sun Tzu will allow his mother, who's 35, to get married to your heir. Not an ideal marriage, I have to say, in that um, you perhaps... Yeah, we are definitely doing this, right? Um, in that perhaps she might be a little bit older and all the rest, but she's a pretty good champion. Um, so... Can we get any money from him? No, we can't get any money from him. That's fine. We get a really solid champion from that. And she will be very, very useful. Military access. We can then go back and sell. 6.1. Um, can he actually pay much more? Yeah, he can. This is a lot of money he's going to be paying me per turn. Oh, there's the big jump and we will just request money um, actually looking at it I'm gonna request food no too much that's a shame uh, just cash then because food will help with replenishment and we do struggle for food at the beginning that's just a touch too much there we go. Not a bad amount of money. Back here. Oh, sorry. Military access. Sun Tzu. He's miles away, so it makes no blind difference whatsoever. Um, he can't pay regularly, unfortunately. But we can just take cash. He's not got a lot of money, so don't expect a huge amount. But every little helps. There we go. That'll do. He's not going to be able Everybody else is relatively happy. Now, if we go over to the negotiate and we look for Kong Rong, and we say to Kong Rong, how would you like to join us? And he's quite happy. So he will come in and join the party too. Now, Jiang Yan is someone... Uh, where did you disappear to? Jiang Yan is someone we do want to join the party, but if we have a look, he's not quite there yet. It's something we need to work on a little bit more long term. So don't worry about not having him straight up. He will come round eventually. We put back over the quick deal. Just give it a quick check, and you'll see that Zhang Hong is here. Now, Zhang Hong Somebody is also that. offering money, um, but you can't get payment per turn, so it's just front up cash. Take the money because you're going to be spending it on a military. There we go. Max it out. Don't worry about relationship building with these chaps. Non aggression packs done and access as well. Flog this. Where are you? Again, he's offering, so request money. He's poor and very poor, so you can't get any food from him, unfortunately. Well, a little bit too much. Um, boom, there we go, 300. There we go. And all cleared, all done. We don't need to do anything else. Very, very handy. Formed coalition. We have a wife for our son. We've invited him into a coalition. We have gained an iron sickle, which will go to our son. Uh, Liu Bei and Gong Suzan are oath sworn. Unfortunately, Liu Bei will not join us in our fight against Yuan Shao. He, he may be oath sworn, he may be best buddies and all that, but he's just not interested, which is irritating. I mean, unbelievably irritating. Um, ah, yes, one of the things I did forget to do, however, was, and this is extremely important, get yourself a non-aggression pack with this chap here. Doesn't cost much money. And then, when you've got the non-aggression pact, where is he, Gong Sun Du? Uh, a little bit too much. You'll be able to sort that out eventually. Um, hmm. Do I have any ancillaries I really don't want? Not really. Right, that's a shame. But you will be able to sort that out with him eventually. You don't want him to be attacking you basically, whilst you're dealing with everything else. Now, as far as assignments go, we have uh, Lady Wu, Song Jingting, Tian Yu, and Guan Jing. None of them are 
overtly useful right at this moment in time, apart from the uh, scouting province. And what I would do is throw her in just to have a quick look in this area, okay? Because she, you want her to keep an eye. We will be recruiting her into the force eventually, but not right at this moment in time. Uh, another thing um, we're going to want to do, and this is perhaps, you know, not the ideal uh, situation for replenishment and all the rest, but it'll be useful. And that's recruiting her now into this army with just two units. We're gonna go back and recruit more later. We're about to fight a battle that's gonna allow us to cross into enemy territory. And then we want to siege this town pretty much straight away. So here we go. Battle here, we can fight a night battle. It says period victory, but it's not, it's pretty simple. Okay, so um, let me just quick save in case anything happens and I'll see you in the battle. Okay, so we're not going to need any of our toys for this. We have the force to defeat them. Um, our lads over here are going to be absolutely killer in this. Absolutely. We'll send those over to support as well. You guys can go very wide over here. Um, you chaps, just advance and have fun with it. Song Jinting as well, because we want you to pick up... Uh, experience from this fight now Gong Sun is going to cause fear um, against these guys basically because they're militia because it's a night battle and because he has this roar of the beast so they should break relatively quickly <clears throat> our main aim is to get these chaps just in range so that they can start raining arrows in they're not going to like that one bit. Gong Sun Zan has so much speed. They're in trouble. There we go. See, starting to wobble already. Boom. These chaps are going to go in this side. These chaps are going to go straight after you as well. Go, 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 go. Yeah, chasing. Tell you what, Constantine, you focus on them. Form up round here. They're starting to pull themselves together. Song Jing Ting, I do not need you in that fight. Gong Sun Zan has it. There we go. Charge in here, charge in there. They're going to break. They have broken. They're dying horribly. Right. Form up here. Form up here. You keep killing. He's killing them. These boys can chase him. Hey. Like you selected here. You boys over here. Which direction are they facing? The right way for a charge. Come on, in we go. They're not expecting this at all. Smash them. Good on you. You're, you're having fun with that. Keep it up. Right. Rush. Rush. See if uh, the heroes can get some kills in there. The uh, main reason is just to see if we can get her up to rank two. Um, because we want to move her across eventually to rank three, where she'll be able to get a flaming shot based on her current skill setup. So the more she kills, the better. Gong Suzanne as well. Having him rank up to level five will also be handy. Um, because Shane Fu is level five. And Shen Yufu hits surprisingly hard for a nobody in this game. Really quite surprisingly hard. How is she doing? 80, 81. Hmm. 125 for him. 
she's not quite going to get 100, I don't think. But they've done a good job. Here we go. I will take that. I will take that all day. Right. Decent amount of money. Uh, we only lost two men, so we don't need to worry too much. We're in their territory, and we've drawn the blade against the rebels. And we've attacked the army belonging to the following faction, and we've defeated Chang Yin. Um, now we've been given the standard thing to reach the fac uh, faction rank of Mark. Uh, and we'll get 2,000 for that. And Shen Fu faces the blade. Shen Fu, by all accounts a traitor and a villain, has predictably risen in rebellion. You have a simple task then. Destroy him and his band of fighters and bring peace back to your territory. Once this is done, his treachery removed, you can look once more to the future. So we need to destroy Shen Fu. We've got 25 turns to do it and we'll get Path of Glory. Um, glorious victory and we have bonus experience for Gong Sun Zan. So mission success and all of that. Very, very nice. This army... Still, um, the reason why we have Song Jinting is going to be very much obvious right now because we're going to attack this and we're going to do it as a night battle, okay? Um, they have a small force, um, but we have a much smaller force. However, she has fire arrows and night battle. His reinforcements won't be able to help him. See you in the fight. This is a straightforward siege. Um, we need to be a little bit smart about where we start, but after that, doesn't really matter that much. Um, we're probably going to hit somewhere down here where they don't seem to have too many uh, barricades. Um, we have fire arrows, which is the important thing. Uh, and loose formation, there we go. Let's get going. So what I need is this gone. I'm just going to speed up a touch. Uh, we should be away from that, so I won't worry too much. And we set that on fire, then we set that one on fire, and then we start to move in. We are going to lose people, however. That is completely understood with this method. Come on, hurry up. Right, one tower down. Uh... Taking a beating with our men there. We're taking a beating. Uh, right, fall back. That should be good. It should just keep ticking up from here. Uh, yeah, both units lost a lot. But that's all right. It's burnt to a crisp. That's fine. One of them's run. Now, these are our real archers. So we're going to let them do a little bit of damage. G Infantry Captain is going to be decidedly unimpressed by that, I think. We'll just keep shooting. Speed up. Keep shooting, keep shooting, keep shooting. And then when the time is right, we will send in Gong Sun Zan. Starting to get to that time. Yep, they're being pushed back. That's quite good. Uh, so if we move here. Yep, they're not even in a decent formation as well. Smash into them. You lads, follow up. Gonsanan has lost his horse. Sort of understandable, given uh, he was charging a spear unit. But he kills these people for fun. And they will break. Come on, charge into them. There we go. Be a good man. She got 17. Yeah, they are definitely going to break. Now, our boys here are going to start to take a little bit of damage. Uh, we're going to throw some arrows in at them. Horses just come up a touch. We need him to charge in. Keep their G militia under control. Because our main aim is to try and get our. Let's just pop that. Uh, our main aim is to get our uh, cavalry in. Because they're obviously a lot more effective than anything else we have right now. There we go, they're starting to run. Fantastic. 
Oh, looks they're hidden behind there. So we have to shoot them out. Well, Kong Suzanne, go right in. You focus on them. You can come in here. Uh, you can come in here. Right, speed up. Arrows already raining in from there because of our incredible range. That's it. They just waver so easily. Go, 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 ride, ride, ride. Don't let them hold you up. Smash into them. Dealt with them pretty effectively. This cavalry unit is going to take a little bit of a beating, but uh, they'll be fine because they'll, they're fast enough to get in. Ah, damn it, our archers took a shot. Anyway, there we go. Our archers are being chased. Our boys here need to pull out of that fight. Uh, Gonsantan can come over here. She can also get involved. Bang! Haha, <laughs> they weren't expecting her. Right, now chase. And our lads here can come into support. Uh, in you go, and in you go. Once Constantin is in that fight, they will see their numbers start to drop quite dramatically. Boom. There we go, there they run. Yeah, the archers took a pounding, but everything else was all right. Lost 171. Got some cash. Occupy it. Uh, and Sillery, we've got Earth Dragon, so this is a title we can give to our generals. That's all really good. These guys will come back in two turns, which isn't ideal. So, um... Mm, do I want to swap with anyone right now? Probably not. Uh, but what we do want to do here is just add a couple of people to this army. They're going to need it. There we go. A few extras. Um, mm, yeah, pull that out as well. This one will just dis and and we will recruit a new batch then we'll get the mustering bonus over here um, what we're actually going to do is march down south over here and then we are going to hire Guang Jing into the force and Tian Yu into the sorry Tian Yu into the force and they're going to get their mustering uh, over here which isn't huge I know um, it's really not ideal but it's sort of better than nothing um, we still have a chunk of cash which we could potentially spend so let's uh, max her out for the sake of argument uh, right his job like I said before is going to be to go down here and deal with this uh, livestock farm um, his job is going to be rushing down here to help uh, Tian Kai at Bohai. Now Xiang Fu is going to hold us up for one turn because we're going to need to fight him. After that we're going to start shifting down here. So we're only going to see replenishment bonus for one turn and it takes five turns for these people to replenish. We have serious problems with replenishment with this faction as things currently stand. Now you always want to check this just at the end of every turn because you'll notice that just by doing stuff means that other no, things no, pop open. Ah, that's not exactly wonderful. Uh, we can't sell that for anything, so that's a shame. Uh, Yuan Shan Shen Yufu, Shen Yufu should, after you beat him a little bit harder, he should pretend, yeah, not potentially, he should crumble and just say, okay, peace. And it's not the end of the world just to peace out with him for 10 turns whilst you deal with uh, this attack here. Anyway, that's enough of turn one. I'll see you in turn two.
Turn 2 always has Yang Feng declaring war on Li Jue. This is to do with the Emperor juggling that happens in the capital following Dong Zhuo's death and the different factions vying for control of the Emperor. It doesn't really affect us right now, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. You do want to look here to see if there's anyone interesting that you can pick up. Now, Zhang Zhao is very, very interesting. Um, he is a uh, Wu Clan, um, Wu Clan Wu, um, advisor. Um, as you see here, he has fondness towards Sun Tzu uh, and a grudge against Wang Lang. He is a pretty good uh, strategist, all in all. Um, I do not need another strategist right now. What I need is a champion or a commander. There aren't any here that really work for me. Liu Kang, you cannot hire. Uh, he has other things going for him because he's not in this pool. I don't know why, but that's just the way it goes. Now, <clears throat> always, flip back in onto the diplomacy and you'll see we have even more options um, he doesn't want anything that we can give him but this you'll start to see has gone up so will he be able to give us regular payments yes he will so let's take wow that was a big jump so let's take some regular payments and let's just take some hard cash you could potentially take food off him as well um, in my current state though, I want cash, food, um, is a benefit, no question is a benefit. He will also offer for this as well, and if you do want food, uh, not offer, if you do want food, you can, oh, he can't even give us any, so there we go. Um, request regular payments, there we go, it's starting to hit there, so just cash then. There we go. Not a bad amount of money. Um, back to the back, saying, bah, he's not going to do anything. Right, all of that is looking good. Uh, if you go back to uh, Kong Rong, you'll see he's at war with Yuan Tan. That's his main focus. And so even though Yuan Shao's army is there, you can't see it. So you can't do a damn thing about it. It's slightly frustrating because otherwise you tell him to deal with it. And see make this work minus 21 not in the slightest bit interested it's so annoying but good news is because we didn't take money off Chiang Kai he has been able to recruit himself a small force it is only a small force but it's better than nothing we're scouting out Bohai, which is quite nice and that's thanks to having uh, Lady Wu do the scouting for us um, over here, this army is starting to put itself together. Um, we are going to shift all the way over here. So we maintain our uh, recruitment replenishment. It's not much, but it's enough. And we're going to go into the livestock farm next turn. Over here, we are going to lose this replenishment bonus because we need to attack this fellow. So just get it over with. He's going to run. We're going to follow. He's going to say slice of victory. We're going to do... Uh, not sure why we get a worse option. Ah, because we have the reinforcements there. Well, that's fine. Reinforcements helping us. Um, ooh, quite a lot of them as well. So, uh, yeah, I'll see you in the fight. Right, his army is quite aggressive. So he potentially... It's going to come straight at me, which means I'm not going to muck about uh, with anything uh, aggressive. I'm going to set up a little bit of a defensive formation. I don't think this fire pit is going to be doing much for me today, but it's fine. This is able to throw rocks at a distance, so let's throw some rocks at a distance. And then hopefully we're going to fight this with our boys over here. That's sort of the idea. Here they come. Right. And you. Let's just shift up a little bit here. And this as well. Uh, Gong Sun Zan, um, in this army, when we recruited, they all came in at rank three. So actually getting rid of those two archer units that died off is not such a bad thing. Uh, you boys can come up as well 
Uh, everyone else. I mean, just be there for moral support. We don't really want to use you. So we have cavalry garrison here, which we can just throw at will at the enemy and not worry about losses, which is quite nice. He, even though he doesn't look too impressive, actually does hit quite hard being rank five. Uh, Gongsun Zan should be able to take him, but uh, you don't want to chance it against him. Right. Go. Go. Arrows coming in. Oh, boys. From up here, they're coming for us. Cav. Cav. Go. And go. And go. Swing off over here. Roar of the beast. See if we can make him run. Go on, you can get in there as well. You chaps shift over here. Ah, Toa Guan Jing. You can chase them. To your speed. Go on, chase. Go. Go. Go on. What are you doing? Fine, you let them charge you. Up to you, really. Right, they've broken. You can focus on them. You boys, over here. They're running. Chase. Thirteen. Kill them. Lads, over there. Form up over here. Uh, actually, no. Go chase them. Let Gongsun Zan deal with him. Reinforcements have finally started to arrive. You can just come up. If you can get involved, you get involved. If you can't, you can't. Archers. Deal with them. Go on, in you go. Boom, War of the Beast. Make him run. Yeah, off they go. Off they go. They are so fast, though. So much faster. Come on, Gong Suzanne. Hurry up. See if we can kill some more of them. And the more we kill, the better. They're getting away. Don't think he's going to catch them. How's she doing? Not bad. We'll let her do her thing. Kill as many as possible. Um, I think this army should be wiped out anyway, but uh, it's all experience. And like I said, both her, Gongsun Zan, um, you know, the White Horse Fellows. White Horse Fellows as well, I should say. I absolutely love these cavalry. Um, they didn't really get much of a run out in that battle there because I was trying to use the other people, but they are just, you know, attack, defense, archery, it all works for them. Shameful, put down. A lot of money. Um, we're going to take the replenishment. And then we are going to start rushing over this way. Now, if you come across someone that you really want to bring in here, bring him in. So like Tian Fen probably isn't a bad idea. It's a lot of money though. Um, what is he like as an individual? Let's check him out. Because these are random-ish every time you get different guys. So I, I don't know him. He's from Ligia Cruel. Clumsy, oh, that's awful for for him. That's that's really not good. Bi Jiao from Guangzhou. Energetic, obstinate, vengeful. Potentially good. Potentially. 
Junk Jao. Disciplinarian, intimidating, and wise. So he could be really, really good. Um, yeah, it's a tough one because we do want to throw in another general here. Tian Fen would normally, a sentinel would normally be useful for me. Uh, Arch Militia, we can ship out, replace it with some better troops. I'd love a champion though. But they don't have one. Sometimes you get a champion. Sometimes you get a better sentinel than this. Uh, sometimes you get Xunyo. If we get Zhang Zhao, he. Bring more archers. I don't really need more archers. We need more melee units. We can always change it up later. No. We're going to bring in Tianfen. I know he's not wonderful. We're going to bring him in. We're going to swap these for more sabers. Um, and I think we... Yeah. Do I want more axes as well? No. Sabres. Sabres all the way. Brilliant. Alright. That's tanked my money. Uh, but otherwise it's pretty good. Have a look at a quick deal here. Shane Fu still doesn't want a piece. Okay. This is a little bit unusual. Usually he wants a piece at this stage. Make that work. That's a lot of money. Um, you could, I suppose, if you wanted to, throw some food at him. Uh, no, he doesn't want to. So, yeah, don't worry about it. Sometimes he pieces out then, sometimes he doesn't. Uh, Non-aggression, military access, none of that is going to help. So, I'll see you in the next turn. Okay, in turn three is the reason why I told you to put a spy, uh, not a spy, but an assignment to spy and scout Bohai. You can see here, here's Xu Yo. Here's Wen Cho, and here's Yan Liang. This is the army that I was warning about. <clears throat> so there's a lot of wars going on here and you also see that Yuan Shao is starting to move up here he will take uh, what turn me three so turn four he'll be here turn five he will attack okay it is that simple four turns to muster so we're going to shift down here um, there isn't much else we can do about that for now, what we can do with these boys, however, is take the fight to Yuan Shao. Because we have uh, an attack here, it says it's a close victory, we'd lose um, some men, that's fine. For the sake of speed, I'd just deal with it, but you can fight it yourself. Um, and we will occupy. That's going to bring us a chunk of money. Uh, it's going to upset him no end. And also you'll see that Amping farmland is now open as well. And there's other farmland, there's yeah as well down here. Um, that you can start to hurt. This isn't ideal for him. Um, it doesn't benefit us massively, massively. Um, because it still is not going to be enough to get him to peace out. If we were going to look at this. See, minus 11. Uh, you could trade the territory back to peace uh, to to get peace if you so wished. That is a legitimate strategy. Focus on Xiang Yu Fu. Uh, focus on a little bit of economic development, and then take the fight back at him. That is a serious, genuine strategy. Um, don't sniff at it. It works. Uh, request for your payments. No, you can't afford it. Unfortunately, um, just throw money at me. Then we need cash. Oh, you really can't afford it. Ah, oh, that's a shame. Oh, Jing, we're not going to give you a non-aggression pack. Zhang Ba. Yeah, he's still not looking good. Sometimes they change every turn. Uh, Liu Chong. You also not looking that great. Military access. However, Gong Sun Du, you now want it. Told you he would want it eventually. Uh, we could request food. We could request regular payments. He can't afford that. So let's just request money. Simple as. Straight up hard cash. Nice. Um, there isn't, yeah. 
not a vast amount else you can do here uh, except keep knocking on Liu Bei's door and seeing if he will join the fight. You do want to keep uh, trying it just because he will crack eventually. He will. I say that. He hasn't cracked right now. And Jian Yan as well eventually will join the... Uh, not to go what? The Invite Coalition. He will eventually do it. Doesn't matter about Conroy, you just outvote him. He will eventually do it. It's getting better and better each time. Uh, but it doesn't happen straight away with him. It doesn't happen straight away at all. Or with Zhang Ba, we can't bring you in, unfortunately. Sometimes she is at war with Yuan Shao by this stage, but she isn't right at this moment of time. We have a little bit of extra cash. Uh, so because we have some extra cash, let's recruit more soldiers. I think, yeah, we'll pop in one of these. Um, they're not really going to be mustered up in time, but it'll be better than nothing. He is going to just stack this out with units. Okay, bear that in mind. That's exactly what he's going to do. Um, and he can reach this town in one go. These guys are mustering. There is in Bohai as well a pathetic garrison. So that's what you're up against. Right. I'll see you in the next turn. Turn four starts with the usual diplomacy that you don't need to worry about too much, stuff happening a little bit further down south. Always check the character developments just in case there's someone there who you fancy. Huan Nu, unfortunately for me, isn't fighty enough. Um, he is much better as an administrator, and I do not need an administrator right now. And so his game, we've got a military Jian, which isn't bad. I'm going to give that to Tian Fen. Uh, just to make him a little bit better off. Of course, that's random, so don't rely on getting that. As far as reforms go, what you want to get 100% is the foreign envoys, um, because this will allow you to get a trade deal with Jiang Yan, um, which not only will bring you extra money, um, you've got the opportunity to milk him for regular payments per turn as well. There we go, 119. Um, You've also got this opening up here. Now Yuan Shu, he, as I show you here, isn't hugely interested in this. Um, it's not really enough, but were you to go across to Wu Jing, um, Yuan Shu is vassal, or yes, he still is a vassal, sometimes he breaks away. Um, you can certainly get about 100 or so from him, and 100 or so isn't a bad, oh, just too much, there we go, isn't a bad thing to have. Um, as far as negotiation goes with Jiang Yan to join the coalition, um, as far as I can get him at this stage, he still isn't that interested. And I don't know what else you could realistically do apart from provide him with a little bit of food um, to push it. Um, so I haven't tried giving him food because I wanted to keep my replenishment population growth and everything else high. But you know, if, if you wanted to, it's worth a try. Now, you'll see, this army is building up here, Yuan Shao is here. There's two possible events from the time I've played this through that'll happen. Either, when you move Gong Sanzan down here to support Bohai, Yuan Shao will stay put, this army will stay put for some replenishment, and then this army will attack you in the end turn, on its own. If that's the case, you have Gong Sanzan as a reinforcement, you should be able to beat this army. Then you have to deal with Yuan Shao as a separate force. Should be okay. Or this army moves up here towards Dai. Now what I think triggers it is where this army moves to. So if I move him straight across towards Zhongshan, then this army will head up towards Dai. And then you deal with Yuan Shao on your own, which is a slightly easier fight, but you still have to deal with this army eventually and he will probably take Dai from you. The other option, by sending him towards Dai um, and bringing him down here, you have a pretty damn tough fight. But if you can win, you knacker Yuan Shao's main army. Just take it out. And you can potentially get rid of some of his top tier generals here, Wen Chou and Yang Liang, which isn't a bad thing. It's just whether or not you're relying on Gong Sun Zan to do it himself, because to be honest, the rest of your guys are just not that level. Um, Tian Kai, yeah, he's got some nice swords and stuff, but he's not really a killer. Um, Tian Fen definitely isn't. Song Jinting definitely isn't. The fire arrows will come in handy. So yeah, it's, it's up to you. For me, what I like to do is see if I can smash them in the battle. Um, 
and kill the people and then move on towards Borhai. Um, but we'll see what they do because it does seem to be a little bit random at least. Um, we're going to move over here and we're going to move our boy down here. And we shall see which way they go and we'll react to it next turn because we have a plan for both. Okay, so here we go and we can see what's happened. So he has moved up towards Dai. Um, we've gained another ancillary, which is a military instructor. Uh, loose formation, probably. I mean, you don't need a loose formation, but that will certainly help you out uh, in general. Um, yeah, also, just uh, in case you missed it in last time, because I came up with this idea uh, straight after I uh, paused recording, is I... Uh, recruited an extra two units here as well just for this army so yeah this chap has decided to move up here and you see Yuan Shao hasn't moved Yuan Shao hasn't moved because he knows he can't take out that army on his own um, he probably can take out this army uh, plus the garrison uh, on his own um, but I don't believe he can do it next turn if you see his movement so what you could do if you want to be seriously cheeky is head straight towards Borhai and besiege it okay it says Peric victory don't worry it's not gonna be a Peric victory um, definitely if you want to auto resolve it take note of the um, fight night battle because it'll deal with your casualties in a better way but I am gonna fight this and it's not gonna be a Peric victory so yeah I'll see you in the battle right so this is a pretty decent city um, we need to look for an area that we think we can exploit better than others. I think it's going to be this corner over here. Uh, there's a couple of towers um, around it. Uh, yeah, both of these corners are pretty similar, but we've got some trees here to hide some troops in um, as we advance. We don't have flaming shot with her, uh, which, you know, isn't the end of the world because all of these boys have fire arrows and loose formation so we're going to be making damn good use of them to deal with a lot of our problems here uh we want song jing ting here um him and his behind him and his behind we're gonna lose some men coming up over the wall for sure but um yeah we should be all right otherwise now what i want is that one down and what I want is that one down and you over here um, this thing I want to knock a hole right in that wall there which I know seems a little bit unnecessary but believe me it's necessary uh, we're a cavalry army um, so knocking holes in walls allows us a way in that we wouldn't otherwise have How's that? 100%? Good, right. Whale on that one now. You boys, almost there. Good. You two, up there. Burn it to the ground. Excellent. Back you come. Excellent job. And back you come. Right, one wall down. Punt another wall down as well. So, they do have spears, but they're not guarding the wall with spears. They're guarding the wall with a Jen Infantry Captain because that's possibly their best unit. Um, <clears throat> and they're probably not expecting me to rush in with Cav straight away. But we'll see. Anyway, we're going to knock a hole in this wall as well. And then we're going to want our axes to get ready. Um, they would be quite handy as well. Axes ready. Uh, behind, we want gang of three here. Um, over this side, we want you with a gang of two. We want you leading this assault. We want you leading this assault. Right. That's quite nice. Now we have a uh, much improved range than their chaps. 
So um, we may as well make use of it with our fantastic white horse fellows. They are facing the wrong way for reasons known only to themselves. 239 and they are 58. I suppose a lot of them died when the uh, catapult took it down. That's quite nice. You form up there, you chaps. Just advance a touch further. See if we can rain some hell onto these. Speed up a touch. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Not bad. Not bad at all. These chaps can now creep uh, you as well creep just a touch further forward we need to watch out for this monstrosity here though there we go it's starting to pull off the walls go on into those arch militia fire arrows as well see how they like that not much Wear them down. Really effective. Right, they're beginning to run. I think. Focus on them just a touch. And then now is the time. You're going to head forward. These boys here are also going to head forward. You lads are going to head forward as well. And there goes Gong Suzanne straight into the fight. He's going to kill in huge numbers because they're just not formed up ready for him. Um, I think we can possibly bring these lads up a touch. So I want my uh, one, two, three, four, five archers to butcher them please axes I want axes right through the gate and I would quite like all three of you through go on in you go into those mounted lancers they are gonna suffer horribly in we go In he goes. Axes coming through. Fire arrows raining down everywhere. Adamant resolve. Let's just wait if we can get more people in this. Come on, let's get those axes too. Oh, that's fine. Right, one axe unit over there. One axe unit come through. You boys move forward here. Good arrows still pouring in, which is what we want to see. Right. You two chaps advance this way. Um, I think you can advance over here. We're going to start to bring the cav in as well. And archers. Just keep moving. Further up the better. Let's do a roar. Go on into those Sabre Militia. Your axes. How are you doing? Fine. Good. Right. Charge. Cav, you two. Round here. They've got unprotected archers up this way. Go. You can come over here to help your men. This cav can rush up here now. The way is uh, a little bit more clear. 
reserve infantry. In they come. Yeah, absolutely slaughtering them. Can we pop this again? We can. Fantastic. Right. I think you can go into that G infantry. Right, you over there. You're chasing them. You're also chasing them. So, let's have a little bit of speed about it. Uh, they have just routed. That was unexpected. So, hang here. Take this. Actually, no. Back. This way. Keep going. Alright. They will route it. That's nice. We'll move back here so we're no longer affected by the uh, arrow towers. Uh, we can throw you up on that wall. And we can throw you up on that wall. Axes I want to advance down this way. Uh, with one lot of Sabre Militia. Smash these guys. I think you can take uh, this one. You can take this one. One unit with, one unit with, other unit to chase. There we go, they're running, they're running. It's just these last two units here. Come on. Forward. Actually, no, you chaps can just go straight for the kill. They've broken. And final one. Just the spear guard here. Smash, roar. Buff. Are they seriously going to hold or are they going to break? Yep, there they go. There they go. They've come back, really? Well, if they want to die. So people are coming back chase them keep chasing them Save militia is going to break. These axes have them. Advance down this way. This unit has this side. Gong Suzan is killing for fun. They're not coming back. So let's go over here. Yep, capture this. Good. Captured. Right. Everyone else routing. Come on. Hit him with a roar. They'll break. Oh, maybe they won't. Oh, that's brave of them. No, they have. They're out. They're out. Completely out. Capture. 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 Just these guys here still standing, eh? Well, let's see if we can deal with that. They don't seem the slightest bit interested. They're not braced though, they're not braced. And there they go. There they go. Very nice. Right. 
slice of victory. None of that pirate crap. Yeah. Loss of, what, 466 men? That's not bad at all. Not bad at all. Um, definitely going to occupy. We've got a military G. Uh, huh. Commander secured. Assignments. Uh, she has been recalled, which is fantastic. So, yeah, we've taken Bohai. high. Walls, you know, are a little bit knackered. Um, perhaps we don't have the best food situation and all the rest for it. Absolutely. All of that is understandable. Uh, but we do have other things where we can start to pump in some more food. So that'll be plus one. Do we have anything else? Not really. That's going to be sort of equivalent. No, definitely not. The lumberyard doesn't produce food. Um, so yeah, spend the money where you want to. Uh, if you want to focus on food, I'm not that fast, actually. Um, the food reduction I can live with for now. We've saved uh, Tian Kai from an attack from Warhai. He still has to deal with Yuan Shao, but like I said, Yuan Shao shouldn't be able to reach him in that turn. Um, we are going to move towards Dai. I know I've just clicked in it, but we're not actually going to go in it. We're going to hang around on the edge here because he is going to try, hopefully, to attack it. And if it's too big for us, then we'll just run away. Um, whilst we can, I'm also just going to recruit a few extra people here just to help out in the coming fight. Uh, what else would be quite nice here? Definitely some of you boys right so that's a chunk of cash gone but not an insurmountable amount of money we'll get a load back next time Zhang Ba what does he want for this that's no good for me uh Yuan Shu how is he looking right now still looking pretty poor military access won't be that much better uh as far as Kong Rong goes he still hasn't taken this territory here, but we could do just to encourage him perhaps to mobilize a touch. So go for go for Yuan Shao. Why not? Jiayan, I don't believe. Yeah, even further away, but the other people want him in the fight now. Um, Liu Bei, he still cannot be relied upon as a friend, see? So don't expect anything like that. Tian Kai, now he has uh, a little bit of extra time on his hands. You? What you can do with him is start to, uh, where is it here, war coordination, start to get him to launch his own attacks too. So potentially you'll need him in the attack against Yuan Shao, but you can tell him, yeah, head off up here, help me out, you know? Get him moving, get him fighting. You actually don't want him besieging territory straight away because uh, he doesn't have an army for it and I am going to give him Bohai uh, later on. So, uh, because I just don't want that drain on food. But for now, I just want him to come out over here, potentially help out. Right, see you in the next turn. Okay, so uh, turn six now and we have more wars that we don't need to worry about and division in the capital, which is more emperor juggling. None of this directly affects us. Now, war coordination has been cancelled because Yuan Shao has got hidden. Now, Yuan Shao is actually here. So what we want to do is just start to slide our way back over here, just in case Yuan Shao wants to play. See, here he is. Now, this will force him to move potentially elsewhere, but remember, he can't just attack uh, any of these cities straight up. He has to land first. This chap has headed off towards Dai. He can't replenish. We can. We've got a pretty decent sized army here. Um, it's not world beating, but it should be enough to hold Dai if he chooses to attack it. Uh, we can always keep looking for more on the cash front here because all of these guys will um, pay more after a couple of turns. So, yeah, 118. A little bit of money is a little bit of money. Gonna shoot. Um, will he pay regularly? No, he won't. Request payment? No, still not good. 
what you can sometimes do with your shoe is support legitimacy and say give me a bucket load of cash okay um it's not a bad thing as well as Gongsun Zan to support his legitimacy because of course you do have a relationship with Yuan Shu because he has his issues with Yuan Shao and you've been supporting him in his proxy wars against Yuan Shao for a long time to the extent that you sent your cousin um, Gongsun Yue down to uh, that's a bit too much down to support him um, Gongsun Yue ended up fighting alongside Sun Jin and then obviously was killed and that's what effectively caught, uh, was another reason for your conflict. So here we go, that's a chunk of cash coming in. Really not a bad sizable amount of money. And what this allows us to do here is actually bring in our Lady Wu. And she can drop straight into that town there. We don't need her to have a full army, a full stack army. That's not the aim here. A um, couple of these boys in. And we are just going to sit relatively ambush-like. Just so we're trying to encourage him to attack. We've given him some bait. We have our boy here. Um... It should be enough to get him to attack. He doesn't have knight battles, as you can see. So, that should be relatively straightforward. Over here, Yuan Shao has a decision to make. Does he pull back? Does he try and attack your vaping? In which case, you'll be able to reach there before he does. Or does he force an attack on an ever-increasing Tian Kai? That's entirely up to him. We'll see what he does next turn for the final turn of this Perfect Start series. And so that ambush we set up has sparked. Now, I'm not going to fight this because of time constraints and all the rest. It says a period victory, of course, with an ambush you could do better, but I'm just going to delegate it and see what we get out of it. So we lost a lot of men. He only has 300 remaining. We've captured Xuyo. He's not a bad chap to have. So let's employ him. We've captured Yan Liang. Yan Liang is a very, very top-end general for Yuan Shao. And you've got your choice here. Do you really fancy his forged iron scale, which you can flog for a lot of money, or do you fancy the uh, 800 income? For me, I'm just going to take the 800 income. I don't mind. And I'm going to take the income here as well. Yuan Shao, like I said, is going to choose another direction to go. That's not a problem, they've got another army knocking about. That army is no real threat. And you would have seen Tian Kai as well moving out to take out that army too, which is why we set him off earlier. So, more moving of the Emperor. Lu Bu has fled to Liu Bei. All of that doesn't really matter directly. We got a ranger's outfit, which isn't bad. Uh, character developments, allies mobilized against force. Uh, ranger's outfit will actually go rather nicely with her. So I'm going to give it to Lady Wu. Um, we don't have any weapons, unfortunately, to give her. No other followers and none of this. That's a real shame. She is quite talented. Gong Sun Shu has leveled up. Um, hmm. So he's not going to administer because he's the heir. We're going to start going across the top here instead. Uh, Xiu has appeared. Um, he has flaming shot. He will eventually go into Lady Wu's army. Uh, I'm not going to do anything with that just at this moment in time. This army here, it's not really worth worrying about. Xinping. Um, who is this chap? Yuan Shi, uh, so this is Yuan uh, Xiao's son, and Ju Shou. <laughs> you have more than enough men to deal with this force if you need to. Uh, lumber yards are not particularly hard to defend. If you just rush all the way over to the lumber yard, he's not going to be able to beat you in there. Simple as that. 
he's just not going to win. This army is going to fall back. What you could do if you wanted to kill it off quickly, because you know he's only got about 300 odd men, is just recruit a few extra in this army and attack straight away. Um, obviously, with Gong Sun Zan, you know you've got Yuan Shao to deal with over here. If you pop this, you'll be able to get into Yobei Ping very, very quickly. He is definitely not going to be able to attack you. Um, as I said before, Xiang Yufu has been beaten in, in submission. He's building up an army. But after you've beaten uh, Yuan Shao here, you can head north and take out Yojo. By beating Yuan Shao here, you'll take out his army here or his army will flee down to the livestock farm. If you lose the livestock farm, you just move down and take it back. It's really not hard with that army. This army here, like I said, if you want to beat him, simply raise uh, an army. Ooh. So Shuyo has a proper force here. Um, sometimes you've, obviously you don't get Shuyo. If not, you just fill out her force and go attack. You'll win. You will absolutely win. These chaps, look at their health. They're knackered. Even a commander can beat them. These spears won't hold up. It'll be a walk in the park. With this army destroyed, this army destroyed at least within two turns. Uh, this army destroyed and this army destroyed, again, at least within two turns. Then you can start to focus on taking John Shan and Anping, and you will have wiped out Yuan Shao by sort of turn 10 to 12. Okay? Um, bear in mind, Zhang Yan is locked in a war with one of Yuan Shao's vassals, his nephew Gao Gan, uh, down here. Uh, you may need to support Zhang Yan in that. You may not. Uh, it depends how he goes. You're not currently at war with Gao Gan. Uh, Kong Rong is at war with Yuan Tan. After you've destroyed Yuan Shao, I would personally get involved in the war with Yuan Tan because you can take Ping Yuan and also give it to Tian Kai. I know it seems a little bit silly giving these cities to Tian Kai when it's potential income, but you just don't make food here um, with your current setup. When you've taken like Zhongshan, Anping, yeah, whatever, you're gonna have a ton of food. He already has the fishing port and the salt mine. Why just have the city that's just gonna be a drain on your food? You can use that excess food for more diplomacy to keep your economy going because you're gonna be wanting to flog the food so you can field more armies and so you can spend money on your economy because so far we have spent very little on our e economy because we've been wo uh, working on the war front primarily. Gong Sun Du is someone who you can trust to an extent now. Um, you may want to just hard push up there uh, once you've dealt with Yuan Shao and take the trade port and, and all the rest. For me though, I would try and trade him for this trade port, keep him on side and look to vassalize him in the future. Because yeah, he's warlike, yeah, he, he has issues basically. Um, let's, uh, here we go. But he's a little bit more trustworthy and a little bit more honorable than he was in other variants of the game, as you can see. So I wouldn't be too worried about him stabbing you in the back. If you can bring him in as a vassal, then you never have to worry about him again. He'll bring you a good income and he will help you fight. He will be really good at fighting. You can also try and look to bring him in in the coalition as well. Now, if you can bring in Zhang Yan and he will join by sort of turn 15, and Gong Sun Du and Kong Rong and Liu Bei, you will have the Northeast locked up. Take out Zhang Jiang, take out uh, Lu Bu, who is going to absolutely wipe out Liu Bei here. He's going to take all of this stuff here. And Liu Bei will be forced to just stay here. Um, and by taking it out, it's going to be you, Kong Rong, Liu Bei together, taking this land out. So it'll be shared a little bit, but you're going to be a massive food powerhouse. After you've solidified this and removed Lu Bu and Yuan Shao, Yuan Tan, Gao Gan, then your next focus is going to be Tao Tao. Because Tao Tao will be growing. Uh, Tao Tao should take out Yuan Shu. He has the best starting set of generals in the game um, in this DLC. Um, he has a lot of food. Um, you know, it all depends how the AI plays him, but there's no reason why he shouldn't take out Yuan Shu. So you want to push down hard after all of this is secured, take out Cao Cao. You have another food set up here, which will just bank on, you know, you can use that to flog anything else. Sun Tzu will no, like, uh, no doubt have taken a huge chunk of land down here. I've never seen Yan Baihu 
stand up to him ever. So he will no doubt have taken a huge chunk of land here. He's the next threat, but you can sort of be a little bit defensive and focus on sweeping west, taking all the horse pastures and getting more of those lovely, lovely cavalry benefits for your army because you are Gongsun Zan, you are the cavalry general. So I would, after taking out Tao Tao, go west. Take over all of Dong Zhuo's former territories, smash Ma Tung, smash Han Sui and anyone else who's still surviving over there because they end up in a little bit of a pit fight. Ally with who you need to, break alliances with who you need to, doesn't matter. Take this land, have the north, and then invade south. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have enjoyed this uh, perfect start for Gong Sun Zan. Yeah, seven turns, and you've pretty much got Yuan Shao on the run. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope it's been useful. If it has, please please leave a like and subscribe and share with your friends and anyone else who fancies playing as Gong Sun Zan. And I'll see you next time for more Total War. Thank you very much for joining me. Bye-bye.